Hey guys, welcome to the Free Skate. We're back. Well, I'm back. Jesse's not back. Jesse's here, but he's not going to be in the video today. Uh, I'm so excited to finally be able to bring a meaningful skating video uh, for you. I know it's like the end of the season. We did hardly nothing. I couldn't. I don't want to muster up and talk about COVID and rehash what everyone else was saying and just cover like domestic events. I don't know. That's just not my thing. So I hope you guys are ready for a good international recap today of the 2021 World Figure Skating Championships in Stockholm, Sweden. We're going to start right off with the men. Um, so the men's results... I mean, didn't really at all go what I thought they would. Like, certain people were where I thought they would be, and others I was, like, mystified with, like, how Vincent Zhao didn't even make the free skate. Like, what? I thought he was going to be in the medal hunt, and he ended up outside the free skate. Um, Paul Fence from Germany didn't make the free skate. He typically, I mean, he's not, you know, a medal contender, but he's at least top... I would say 10th to 14th generally good skater, not out of the free skate. Um, but you know what? Let's get into the top three. So in third place winning the bronze medal, we have our Yu Zero Han Yu. Uh, you know what? He led after the short program. I thought his short program was just... I don't know how you can get better than that short program. It is just off the charts. So exciting let me entertain you like he entertains you i can't i just i just don't see another program better than that one his edge work and his attitude and everything to do with that program is just so so good every movement is to something every movement's meaningful i'm just i don't know that program is literally everything um, and he had a well-deserved first place after that. Um, unfortunately, in the free skate, he kind of combobulated. But you know what? He did have uh, the quad attempts, and he did have his, his score after the first portion of the event to carry him through to just eke out a bronze medal um, over his countryman, Shimo Uno, who finished fourth place. And you know what? Good for Shoma, because you know Shoma has a history of um, like just combusting <laughs> when he's when he combusts he combusts like he's the one where you can't watch fall because he like splatters on the ice everywhere so i'm glad that he actually made it through sixth in the short third in the long and he is fourth overall so i think that's a pretty good competition for shoma uno he played out some pretty good skaters and i think it's gonna be really good for his confidence going into an olympic year but back to you zero for a second so i have a few of course we have a few judging problems with with these marks here. Now, obviously, I mean, with Yuzuro's free skate, he was never going to win. He's he's lucky to even medal. So, like, I'm not disputing his placement or anything. That, that is, is what it is. But I just, I can't, I don't know. The, the component marks are just mind-blowing to me. I just, I find such a difference between Yuzuro's skating style and Nathan's skating style. And this isn't really knocking Nathan, because I think Nathan is a tremendous skater, obviously. He's won how many world championships now, so... Uh, and he deserved to win this one again, so I'm, I'm not knocking that at all. Uh, I just find... I find his skating a little more simple. I find his skating a little less detailed. And to me, that's a little bit easier. Um, and I don't think that reflects in the PCS marks all the time. Uh, his, his marks are very, very close to zeros in PCS and I just don't think they should be that close where it's like point one, like a tenth of a point off his, his marks. I just think he's a little bit more than that. Now, I'm not saying he should be like getting sevens and low eights for his PCS, but I don't think he should be at 9.75s and 9.5s for most of his stuff. Uh, for his interpretation of his music, yeah, sure, I'll take a 9.5 for him because I think he interprets his music really well. But his, like, transition, specifically transitions, I'm sorry, but, like, I think Yuzuru triples his transitions. Why is Nathan getting that much of a transition mark versus Yuzuru, who is, like, doing triple them? So I don't understand... I thought you weren't going to do Oh, the video. my 
Are we talking about the judging? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can I just say my piece first now that I just heard sure. that? Hi, guys. Um, yeah, I agree 100%. And I was telling Ryan, we were watching this whole thing, you know, unfold in front of our eyes, the whole competition. I said, it just seems weird that I'm seeing all these, like, skaters that you don't... Like, a Tresova situation. We'll, like, we'll get into that after. I was like, I don't think she should be third, right? Like, because of the point is... The problem is, as I said last year, the technical is, like, outweighing... You know, almost 35% more than, say, like the PCS. Like, it's you can't even come close. Why are we grading what just because you can do a quad and you don't land it? You should not be getting that amount of points still. Then everyone should just land it and fall, and who cares? And we'll all, you know, it's becoming a jumping sport instead of an altogether sport and a sport that should be in the sake of. Both, right? PCS should count. It should. We are going to cover all of. There this, should be an amazing, if like a Jason Brown might not be able to do all the quads, but can all of those skaters do the same PCS as him? No, they don't have all the same program. They can't spin the same way. They can't do the edge work and the elegance and all that. So why are they anywhere near him? If you can go thirty points above somebody in technical, then you can damn well go 20 points ahead in the skater. Because let me tell you something, being a great skater at the same time is just as hard to be a great jumper. Not everyone is born to be an amazing, great, elegant looking skater. So you got to reward the great skaters. They deserve the PCS marks. And I mean full potential. They got to be. So what I would say is they got to be more stricter on the whole PCS scoring. Well, right now they're factored by 1.2, which is not a lot. So mm. I think if they're factored more close to 1.8 to 2, you're going well, to have I'm just that saying, point difference. Average skaters are getting in the sevens. That's no. you. That's too easy. You're just giving marks away. They have to come up with a system that's going to make it harder. Like a, like a seven, that's a, you know, I would say like a six should be like an average skater. So where can you fix, where can you fix that? Scoring there is not system. that many people that get sixes, honestly. No, I know. When, and what few. I'm saying is they got to figure that well, out because few, how come we can get... We're, we're jumping technicals way up there. So you're allowing a technical skater to win the whole thing, even if they fall, even if they don't have a great um, PCS, because they're at least doing the quads. That's not how you reward someone. Do you know what I mean? Like, in, So you got to be able to reward somebody who's a great skater... Just as good, right? Like, they can't be, oh, there's six marks off that person. You know, oh, there's six marks better in the PCS than that. Okay, then the scoring system's not working because the technical is outscoring so much of the PCS. That's my biggest issue. Where with, There's way too much easiness for the technical to jump to get your marks. And somebody who's a great skater doesn't... So here's the, the bottom line is this. doesn't matter if you're a great skater and figure skating. Why? Because all you got to do is jump a quad and it doesn't matter if you land it or not, you're going to get up there. That is not how you become a great skater or an overall okay. skater. So do you have anything else to say about Nathan or Zero? Okay, I wanted to say this little spiel fast. Nathan clearly deserved to win Obviously. at the end because Zero just did not do good as long. But the short program, I think he was unmarked a little bit. And um, I mean, it wouldn't have probably mattered mm -hmm. at the end of the day. But... The PCSs, again, are too close to them. I Okay, you guys, I want you to do this if you don't believe me. I don't care if there's any haters out there. Do what I just did. I went on my Instagram and I went to people who I don't know a lot of figure skating fans. And I said, I put clips of um, Year Zero versus Chen, the short program. I said, tell me who you think is better. I just want you to, and I didn't want any bias. I just wanted non-figure skating fans to tell me what they were more into. What did they say? It was 100% annual, and I knew it would be. And what I'm saying is if you don't believe me, do it to your own Instagram and your own friends who don't watch figure skating see what comes up. The skating is not the same, and neither is that program, and it's not even close to me. Jumping, sure, 100%. Nathan is normally a very good jumper. You have I to give him Nathan, those marks. Honestly, I think Nathan does jump better than you zero. Yeah. But... I mean, but I just think as an overall skater, overall performer, and overall figure, like, there's just no one better. But Yuzuro didn't deserve to win that whole thing because he just bombed in his right. long program, unfortunately. But that's all I have to say. Bye, guys. <laughs> Go <Good> drink. <laughs> Go. Okay. Anyways, I got all...
fluster now that we were interrupted here so rudely by Jesse. <gasps> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. But okay, another thing I want to bring up was um, some of the judging with the men. And I noticed uh, Mikhail. Uh, so here, uh, Kaliata. So number judge number one uh, in the short program was Lisa Davidson of Great Britain. I actually noticed she was like super hard to please, which I really, really like that because she was equally hard on everyone. And her her marks were like probably the hardest I've ever seen somebody mark PCS, like, across the board. And I don't think she favorited, she favorited anyone. Um, believe it or not, you guys, she marked Mikhail Kalieta's PCSs, all of them more in the sevens. And I commend her for that. Like, good for you, Miss Lisa Davidson. You need to show those judges how to mark skating because... They're handing out nine fives and tens all over the place, which is crazy. So, um, what I also noticed too was, I think she was she was basing stuff that she had seen on the ice versus the reputation of a skater. And we all know that in the ISU, the judging system um, or the judges seem to gravitate towards proven skaters. You almost have to be around X amount of time to like be worthy of these marks, which I think is complete bull on the flip side if you are a four-time world champion and you have gotten lazy in your transitions and you haven't skated that well that day or let's say you looked tentative and slower or you were a little bit sick or whatever the case is that doesn't give you the right to automatic nines across the board if you skate like a six then you should be graded a six Speaking of sixes, um, I've noticed that that judge also went down to, like, fours. And some of the guys, too. A world championship man's were getting fours. Like, that's what the judges need to do and be really hard. If you're not a good skater, then you're not a good skater. Just because you're landing quads or you have power or whatever doesn't automatically give you nines. I think that's... Anyways, that's the lesson of this story. So, moving on to Keegan Messing. Uh, Keegan had a lot of pressure for him to perform at these world championships because he was uh, Canada's only man and that came with a lot of responsibility because Canada wants two spots for the Olympics but for him to place uh, to or to get two placements for Canada he had to be in the top uh, 10 and last Olymp or last world championships he was in so Keegan would have had to place uh, top 10 and last year or 2019 he was 15th so that wasn't uh, uh, an automatic given uh, so Keegan got selected to go before uh, Roman Sadovsky even though Roman was the Canadian champion I just think Keegan had more experience for this type of thing so that's why they had sent him and he delivered he had two really really good programs um, and he ended up finishing sixth place. So he does have Canada. Uh, he gets Canada two spots for the Olympics, which is really, really nice. He should be really, really proud of that. And he was definitely a fan favorite, too. I think all the skaters really, really love him. And he got very, very high PCS marks, too. Uh, he got a lot of nines um, in his PCS, which is really, really big for him. I'm not entirely sure if I agree with, like, 9.75s and 9.5, because now you're putting them in the same category as, like, Nathan Chen and Yuzer Anu. And... While he's entertaining and he's fun to watch, is his actual skating as good as them? He's got the power. He's got more power than them. Uh, but his steps and his intricacy of them aren't as well performed or thought out. And there's less of it. So are they judging PCS based on how you just look in your program? Or what your content actually is? Um... He got around the same PCS scores as like Jason Brown and like Mikhail, actually, well, Mikhail Kolyad in the in the free program too. Um, I don't know what these judges do half the time. I don't really understand them, but it is what it is. Um, Yuma Kagiyama, second place, crazy good. Such a young skater to look forward to for Japan. Uh, he could go toe to toe maybe for the next Olympics or the next round of world titles in between the, the two Olympics. Uh, he's already scoring that high. He's won the silver medal at his first uh, ever world championships and that does not happen very often, you guys. You, how often do you see somebody coming out of juniors and win a world title? Minus the Russian ladies. Like, not a lot of people. Right? Um, really, really good for him. 
Um, Jason Brown finished seventh. That's pretty respectable considering he doesn't have uh, really any quads. Although he did land his quad in one of his programs, but I think it was under rotated. I could be wrong. Um, but Brown, he wasn't fully clean, but his skating is just so pure. He's got such good edges. He's got such good transitions and footwork. Uh, he is definitely 100% one of the world's best skaters. Skaters, skaters. Nathan Chen won the gold medal. I really, really enjoyed both of his programs. Uh, again, completely different style of skating than Yuzuru. Um, Nathan is more power-based, more technical-based. So does the technical base of the program give him the right to 9.75 star transitions? To me, no. I don't know why you're doing that. Just because you're doing five quads doesn't mean you deserve 9.75s and everything, or 9.5s. Um, I think he is probably more on par with uh, Koliata for PCS. Um, the only difference between Koliata and Nathan is Koliata is not doing five quads, and Nathan is. Um, now, we're obviously not saying Nathan is, like, you know, a seven skater or something. He definitely deserves to be in the mid to high eights, but I don't really see him in the mid to high nines. I think that is far too much for him. And that's for also, too, if they adjust this judging system with the scoring instead of the, you know, the PCS factor, like, let's say, being... Um, a 1.2 factor, they need to have it a 1.8 or a 2.0 factor. Because if you can, like Jesse said, if you can beat uh, somebody in jumps by 30 points, then you should be able to beat somebody by PCS in 30 points. And increasing that factor is going to reward the actual good skaters and allow them to catch up. But they also have to be judged fairly too. You can't keep on bringing up the you can't keep on giving Nathan 9.75s and have it factored by 2 when that won't make up any, any difference. You have to actually judge. If you're, like I said before, if you're a 6 skater, then you should be judged as a 6 regardless of how many quads you do. So let's go down to the women. Um, the women, okay, so Sherbakova wins the world title. Uh, second in the free, first in the shore, 233 overall. Uh, obviously much deservedly winning of that world title. I don't think there was anyone that skated the event better than she did. Um, so good for her. Um, I do have a big problem with Trusova's placements and her PCS scores. Um, no, her PCS scores were not the best, but I still think she is judged too high in PCS. I also have a problem now. This is where the whole technical, uh, the TES scores come in to play here. So... Uh, she got 7.8 points for a downgraded quad toe loop sequence. She still got almost 8 points for a fall and a downgrade. So now you're giving the president to... Well, every skater may as well just over-rotate a triple. And they're going to get double the points. Because that's what you're saying. It's absolutely ridiculous. There's no way that you should be getting 8 points... For a downgraded fallen jump. Like that's absolutely ludicrous. So now you're you're saying to the skaters who skate clean triples that it doesn't matter. As long as you you try quads, it's okay if you fall and it's okay if you under rotate or downgrade them, you're still gonna get more points because you're getting the points for attempting it. They deserve all the points in the world if they're landing them cleanly and they're and they're clean. That's fine. I have the big problem with them scoring eight points on a sequence that was downgraded and fallen on. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. That's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And that's why Chusova was first place in the free skate. Chusova won the free skate, you guys. And we're not knocking Chusova here. Like, she did what she had to do. And the coaches know how to manipulate the system and all that. But it is the ISU's responsibility to get that system fixed like ASAP. You can't have another Olympics where there's a skater who wins off BS. So Trusova was just going to try six quads in the Olympic free skate and win because that's what she has down on paper. And literally everyone may as well do that. It's going to be a complete shit show. I think it's just, I don't know, the US has, or the US, the ISU has got to do something about it. Um, her quad Lutz was downgraded. Um, and she still ended up getting 
six points for it. Five or six points for it. So again, so that's more than a clean triple. What's the point of doing triples then? That's what I'm saying. It's like the stupidest thing. Um, so anyways, let's focus on more of the positive. Uh, Takta Masheva winning the silver medal. Guys, she is been to the world two times now. This was the second time. The first time she won in 2015, the second time was now. Everyone in Russia probably had written her off except for the fans. Um, she's 23 years old and she wins a world silver medal. And for like a Russian 23 year old to win a silver medal at the world, that's like being 95 because that just doesn't happen. All the Russians are 16, 17, 18, 19 tops. Once you break it 20, if your if you're ages in the twos, like see you later. Tuck Tuck proved them all wrong. Um, I will say her free skate wasn't into it. I did not like her free skate. Um, it's just, it doesn't suit her. I think she's more of a sultry, sexy, powerful skater. Um, I don't think she needs to do like the Asian themed song that's elegant and like, like that's not who she is. Stick to what you're good at. It was reminding me of the uh, 2018 Olympics when Trasov and Morozov skated to Candyman. Like, who on earth thought that that was a good idea and like went the whole year was like yeah keep on working on it you'll be okay like no no Liza don't ever do that again ever you stick to what you're good at be sexy you'll be you'll be good you'll probably win <laughs> um so fourth place Karen Chen saved the day for the United States um between Karen's and Brady's placements of ninth and fourth you have three women for the Olympics. So good for the United States, good for Karen Chen. Um, a lot of people had Karen Chen written off and they were mad that Amber Glenn didn't uh, go. But you know what, Karen's got the experience. Karen has been through a lot more and uh, I think that was definitely the right choice. It obviously proved to be the right choice. I don't think Amber Glenn would have stood a chance to be fourth in the world at, at all, actually. Uh, so we, are going to see the United States have three lady spots for the next Olympics. Uh, Karen skated her butt off. Uh, two beautiful programs. Uh, you know, she was fourth in the in the short program too. Um, super clean, super good um, edges. Really, really beautiful. Uh, she looks like she has her confidence back. She went through a rough time there for a while. And you know what? She's, she's coming back. So good for Karen Chen. Uh, Leona Hendricks, uh, I was so happy for her that she placed fifth, a Belgian skater placing fifth in the Olympic or in the Olympics at the World Championships has never been done before. You guys, this is the first time in history that a Belgian skater has placed in the top five at the World Championships. Uh, the last one was a sixth place finish in 1932. Um... And get this, by the way, you guys. So some dirt on her. This is like Tanya Harding to like the sixth degree. This Belgian skater in 1932, uh, Yvonne de Ling, she was, uh, she had like a crush on a Dutch male figure skater. And she hired a hitman to kill her husband. And she was charged for murder. And she got 15 years prison. And the only reason why it wasn't more is because she had tuberculosis, so they let her out and she died. Like, what? That's crazy. I think that's, like, wow. Anyways, that's a little fun fact for you guys. <laughs> the Matrix program. I loved that program, except for this time around. I thought it was very um, underwhelming. Uh, normally, I have seen her skate it so with so much power and so much conviction. But I think a part of it is to do. It's so hard to emit an emotion from that program to red empty seats. I don't think it works like that too well. So I think that probably had a big, uh, big factor in how she was performing that Matrix program. But I just don't think it worked for her in that arena at this time. Um, I think maybe she should keep it for the Olympics though, and maybe. Uh, redo it and rework it um, I th or cut a new half music for it but keep some sort of theme like that because I think that that uh, that powerful kind of music like that works really really good on on her so we'll just leave it there